People who say life is more meaningful because it's temporary or life is more valuable because it's temporary. Let's expose this bullshit for what it is, shall we? So gather around, everyone. Grab your popcorn, whatever drinks you like. We're going to have another blaster tonight. Sound good? Sounds good to me. So you remember that line in the movie Troy where Brad Pitt's character Achilles was saying, the gods envy us because every experience could be our last. Every moment could be our last and blah, 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 all this other bullshit, right? I'm like, that's so much fucking idiocy. That's so much fucking obvious copium. God. Are they really that fucking stupid? Seriously? Well, back in the Bronze Age, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. But, I mean, nowadays, come on, man. Come on. But even back then, for fuck's sake, if you were a deep-thinking philosopher, you wouldn't have been that motherfucking stupid. But, you know, the mass of people probably were that stupid back then also about this. Just like they're... Everybody, almost everybody is too stupid to recognize they need to have edible food around them at all times, no matter what, and have to make sure of it. That's one of the things that I think most people have been dumbass about for the entirety of human history, which is why immortality tech has been very slow to develop for that exact goddamn reason. So, first of all, if it's not already obvious, if you don't already have in your head thousands of examples that prove this is total fucking bullshit. Let me lay many of them out for you and explain many direct examples. Because not only is this a stupid statement, it's an absolute flat-out lie also, on top of being insanely fucking dumb. So, for example, well, first of all, let's talk about the motherfuckers who usually go on this narrative and say this shit. Usually these are natalists, people who already have kids, or people who vouch for, philosophically, it being a good or justifiable idea to bring new kids into this nightmare fucking torture scape and expose them to the risk of torture to death. Just by being here. These are the motherfuckers that say, with their mouths, with their stinking fucking breath mouths, oh, life being temporary is what gives it more meaning, right? More value. So, When they're saying this, even if they use the wording, things being temporary is what gives them value, what they're meaning to say is things being temporary is what gives them a positive, affirmative, inspirational, useful value, more so than if they weren't temporary or if they were extremely long-lasting, up to the point of being almost eternal, right? But they contradict this bullshit lie that comes out of their mouths in every single fucking thing they do every goddamn fucking day. Okay? So a person who has a kid and the kid dies three days after it's born, nobody in the right fucking mind is going to say that that kid's life had more value because it was more temporary than the kid's life who lasted 30 40, 50, 60, 70, however many years, up into immortality tech indefinitely via transhumanism, right? Nobody's going to say that the life that died instantly within three days was more valuable, or let's say the lack of positive experiences was more valuable than the positive experiences that the person had going through their life. Because remember, they're not just talking about meaning itself when they say this, because you could have a situation that is full of negative, bad, terrible, awful meaning. So meaning itself is irrelevant either way because you could have meanings that are horrible meanings, implications, and you could have meanings that are connected to torture, torturous in nature, and you could have values that are negative values. So value itself, as this little floaty boaty word, has no significant meaning either way because the context is, okay, what kind of value and how long-lasting is it? But they don't think about these fucking things. They just spout shit out of their fucking mouths. All right? So let's shut these motherfuckers down and shut them up. So they stop burping this bullshit out of their fucking faces. All right? So, now that we've got that little rant out of the way, I hope many of you are laughing your asses off by now. And if you're not, no big deal. Let's continue on. So that's one example. 
So they'll say out of their mouth, oh, things being temporary or shorter lasting rather than extremely long lasting makes them more meaningful. No, it doesn't. There's obviously more meaning in the pleasurable experiences you had with your kid throughout their life, the smiles, the joy. If the kid dies three days after you had him, especially if you're a couple that's been trying to have kids for a long time, a natalist couple, you're going to be devastated, traumatized, likely experience a form of PTSD, all sorts of other stuff. Lifelong, afterwards. So it's going to have negative, bad, terrible, awful values for you. Not positive, affirmative values. It's going to be the exact opposite of what, of what you're fucking claiming. A piece of fucking toilet paper you wipe your ass with. It's about the most temporary motherfucking thing there is. It's bullshit that you're going to claim that has more value because of its greater amount of temporality than all the other things you do in your life. Okay, let's continue. Your house that you're living in right now. Nobody in their right fucking mind would say that a house that took three years to fucking build, a gigantic mansion, and it only lasts one day and burns up in a fucking fire the day afterwards, nobody, no one in their right mind is going to say that that building has more motherfucking value because it burned down after one day of use than if it lasted 10 plus years before being burned down. <coughs> Nobody motherfucker. Least of all the people saying this shit out of their fucking mouths. Bullshit. That's going to cause you distress trauma and cause you, agony the rest of your life, the fact you put all that fucking work into it, and then it's just burned up within a fucking day. Gone. Okay? And there's people who have experienced very similar things to this. And I can guarantee you, unless they're a dumb fuck, they've changed their philosophy immediately after such an experience. You know what? It was really dumb as fuck for me to say that something being more temporary is what gives it its value or meaning. Or saying that that's what increases its value or meaning. So both statements are false. Something being temporary is what gives it its meaning. And something being temporary is what makes it more meaningful. Both variations are false statements. Provably so. Okay? What gives stuff its meaning and value, its positive, affirmative, uplifting meaning and value, is how pleasurable it is and for how long it is pleasurable to you. Boom! This bullshit has been destroyed just with this one fucking statement of fact. All right? So next time somebody says this bullshit to you, call them out and say exactly that. What gives things their meaning and value is how pleasurable they are and for how long they are pleasurable. That is what gives them value, not the fact that they're temporary, you dumbass. Okay? And they have no ability but to agree because that is the fact, period. You can display this fact with evidence and you can actually scientifically verify this fact if they're that dumb to not understand it from a simple statement and just thinking about it for a second. Okay? <clears throat> But we're going to be in a world that's surrounded by these motherfuckers who still go on this bullshit spiel after this. I can almost guarantee you they're just going to keep saying it over and over and over again. You almost just want to punch them in the fucking face, you know, and shake them. You know, fucking throw them through a glass window or some shit for how fucking asinine they are for being this goddamn stupid. You know, I feel like that sometimes. In terms of the degree of irritation I feel with people being that fucking stupid. <clears throat> you know? Just to drill the point in. It's like... So let's just let's just continue on with the examples. Just, uh, just to compound it and to just to grind this motherfucking bullshit into the fucking dirt. Into the concrete. To make mesh meat of it, alright? <clears throat> so it's impossible for somebody to ever say it around me ever again. On this channel, in this comment section, at the very least, okay? Let's do at least that. And all of you people who are subscribed, you intelligent people who are active here, commenters and stuff, you don't promote this bullshit ever. And I'm vividly aware of that because you see the bullshit in it, right? So at least these people claiming or saying that life is meaningless or purposeless, even though that's also in error, it's at least a little less bad than, and it's not as dumb because at least they're recognizing that life is full of negative values and negative meanings, right? <clears throat> Bad, torturous meanings, right? Not meaning less, but affirmatively full of horrific meanings and implications. 
the only benevolent meanings being the pleasurable ones directly and however long they last. <clears throat> but they're connected to torturous reasons, so at least those people who say that are a little more intelligent than the ones who are saying temporary equals meaning or temporary equals more meaning in the positive sense, right? <clears throat> So nobody's saying that things don't have any meaning at all around these spaces among highly intelligent people. Pleasure itself obviously has meaning. Life that is pleasurable, more specifically, the pleasurable aspects of your own individual life experience are meaningful, yes. But that doesn't mean that, therefore, reality is okay, hunky-dory, not a torture scape, everything's fine. It doesn't follow, okay? It does not Follow. Learn that phrase. It's an old phrase that's been used for a very long time, since the ancient days, by well-thinking, deep-thinking philosophers. Okay? If something doesn't follow, it doesn't motherfucking follow. You having meaningful experiences that are meaningful to you in your individual motherfucking life, okay, does not equal reality as a whole, life as a whole, being this good worthwhile thing. It doesn't follow. Okay? This is the thing you need to fucking have sink into your brain. And I'm saying this as someone who lives what would be deemed a very good quality life and feels very happy in my life. But I recognize this even. Okay? You don't have to be living in a miserable existence to recognize these fucking things. So the other example, let's give another one. The example of your health falling apart very quickly instead of lasting longer. Nobody in their right mind would say that your health only lasting for a few years and then you dying of a horrific fucking disease a few years afterwards is a more positively meaningful life than a life where you didn't face health problems until maybe the very end and then you died very quickly from or slowly you died later on in life, right? After having a life full of good health, comparatively speaking, all things considered in the hellscape, obviously. And then, you know, at the end, you just don't have a huge amount of pain as you're dying, but you just kind of trail off. You know, it's, it's almost impossible to have a painless death. In like 99.9% .9 of cases, deaths are always extremely fucking painful. Anything minus dying of carbon monoxide poisoning or something, right? <clears throat> Gradual carbon. Even even then, it's probably not entirely painless. You probably have at least a few moments of feeling the pain of dying or something. But, <clears throat> but the point is, you are not having a more valuable experience because of a more temporary experience of life or a more temporary experience of positive things. Another example, if you have a romantic relationship with a, a lady you find extremely attractive and she dies horrifically and is gone after three days of having great times and interactions with her, you're a lying sack of shit. If you're going to say that that, it be, her, that dynamic you had with her lasting only three days made it more valuable than if you'd had 20, 30, 40 years with her, full of experiences, right, that were positive and uplifting. You're a bullshitter. No, it wouldn't be more valuable. Would it still have value? Would those three days have value? Of course, they would have value, but they're not more valuable than 20, 30, 40 years with the person. Okay? That's the issue. Nobody's saying that those things themselves don't have value to you in your experience. Nobody is suggesting that or saying that anywhere. Unless they're a dumbass motherfucker. What they're referring to specifically is that those things don't have more meaning. And that's not what gives the things value. It's the pleasure itself that gives the experiences value, not how long or how short it lasts. Okay? The pleasure is the value part, not how long or how short it lasts. In fact, the length of it lasting is what gives it more value than lasting shorter. Okay? But the pleasure itself directly is the value thing. Okay? So pleasure over the course of a week is more valuable than pleasure that only lasts one day. If the pleasure actually lasts, we're not talking about somebody having pleasure and then their hormonal system is fucked up and they lack pleasure 
and they just do the same thing for seven days, but are not getting pleasure from it. We're talking about actually getting pleasure from the thing for seven days is more pleasurable and thus more valuable and less temporary, more close to the direction of eternal than temporal. Okay. That's the more valuable thing. The longer lasting thing is the pleasure. So I'm going to correct myself and be more specific here. Both at the same time, the pleasure itself and how long it lasts are what gives things value. Okay. That's what I'm saying here. I had a Freudian slip earlier and I said the, the l length of it either way doesn't have a, actually the longer it lasts is what gives it more value specifically. Okay. In particular, it being temporary and lasting shorter, being more temporary is affirmatively, provably, verifiably what gives it less value or whatever value it gives it, it gives it miserable, nightmarish, horrific, torturous value, not positive, useful value. Okay. So think about it, folks. Think about it. How is it that humans have kept peddling the same bullshit for thousands of motherfucking years? If Achilles actually said something like that way back in the day, or ancient people said that shit, it wouldn't surprise me. Because they said a lot of stupid shit back then. And a lot of stupid shit they believed and thought is still believed and thought today. Fucking Stone Age, Bronze Age fucking thinking. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Yeah, human thinking as a whole does not advance along with technological advancement. It just fucking doesn't, okay? It just doesn't. You got to independently advance your own fucking awareness, independent of fucking technology or lack thereof. You got to. And having a carbon-based fucking form gives us a biological cap on how deep we can think about shit, and that's also fucking stupid as hell. But if you can recognize what the cap is and why the cap's there, you can actually see past the cap. All right? So there being a cap on how far you can think can actually show you and let you know, if you're a deep enough thinker, what is beyond your capacity to think about, and it shows you and confirms to you it's torturously evil. Okay? Because what is torturously evil is what? Let me hear it. It's your lack of ability to know the full details is what is torturous and evil about it. Okay? That is the problem with it. Just like the equal problem to it is the problem of knowing too much about the damn thing. So either knowing too much is torturous, knowing too little is torturous. So you're in this little sour spot, because it's not a very sweet spot, between the two fucking things, eternally juggling knowing too much or too little about the damn thing. Okay? Okay? Because when you know too much about it, you get depressed as fucking nightmarishly tormented. When you know too little about it, you're absorbed in a little oblivious fairy tale, happy dappy playland. And then as soon as something collapses within that playland, you go back to knowing too much about the torturous reality again. And the fact that the cap on your thinking is part of the fucking problem is part of the fucking torture. And back and forth it goes, Okay. But it doesn't go back and forth for those absorbed in little oblivious playlands in their head right now. Like dumbasses that say that things being temporary makes them more valuable or gives them value in the first fucking place. They can't understand what we're fucking talking about right now. And even if they do, they're so stupid and arrogant because it's about the emotional hype for them at every moment. It's not about what's the deeper thought thing or not. It's about, hey, chuckle, chuckle, smirk, smirk. What kind of clever comment can I leave in response to this that I think is clever and is going to make me chuckle and smirk versus, holy shit, that's actually a solid point. Let me stop being such a dumbass, you know? Because what's more important to them is fucking feeling good in the moment about their smirky, snarky little comment that's blatantly, verifiably dumb as fuck, but they can't recognize as dumb as fuck. No matter how much you point it out to them, Right? This is why I love it. I really fucking enjoy it when dumbasses like this go dead motherfucking silent on me. Because that's all they fucking can do. There's nothing they can respond to if they're going to try to keep disagreeing with shit. Because all they're going to do is expose more of their fucking stupidity. 
So all they can do is listen quiet and shut the fuck up or actually agree with what I'm talking about. And it's not agreeing with me. It's agreeing with the facts of what the reality is. People, but their thinking goes like this. Oh, he's talking about agreeing with him. What an egotistical narcissistic asshole. Not realizing that's totally motherfucking irrelevant to the points themselves. Because they're emotionally tribalistic. But another topic for a different day, right? Oh, the fucking curse of being introverted and obsessive and an overthinking person. It's a curse. And here it is. But in one way, it's a blessing because you can sift through all the bullshit top to bottom and not face any of it in terms of any holes in your understanding or perspective, other than the holes that are automatically there by having a fucking carbon based limited fucking brain itself. <coughs> but philosophically, you don't have any holes. So you can at least pat your own back and kiss your own ass for that one. All right. So let's go over more examples, shall we? Let me know in the comments below all the examples you can think of yourself of all the fucking cases where something lasting longer, something that is specifically pleasurable, lasting longer and being pleasurable longer is more valuable and is what gives it its meaning of value over and above something that is more temporary, shorter lasting than that, right? You can think of a million examples because every single motherfucking thing we do in life is connected to this principle, right? We build a house so that it lasts, not so that it, we, not so that it's built to fucking be torn down and destroyed and just gone the next day. We build portable shelters so that they can, long lastingly work as what a portable shelter over time. You don't go through all that effort to sew up a tent that you custom build just to have it fucking thrown in a campfire or the first day you fucking use the thing. Come on. <coughs> you know, Oh, this tent is so much more valuable because we only use it for a motherfucking day, even though it took us fucking entire months to sew the thing up and custom make it and custom weave the fabric and everything else. Isn't it so great that it's just temporary? You know? <sighs> I almost want to grab these motherfuckers' heads and, like, shove their head in a fucking terribly smelling trash can. Right? And be like, how's that for temporary, motherfucker? Praise the fucking temporariness of everything in this rotting, stinking fucking trash can. The rotten fucking eggs. The fucking decaying corpses of half-eaten, rotted pieces of flesh you hadn't finished that you started eating. It's all more meaningful because it's temporary, right? So why aren't you valuing it being temporary, you dumb fuck? Your goddamn philosophy is this, you motherfucker! Right? Not that I would actually do this, but what I'm saying is I give these examples because that's the degree of irritation and annoyance. I feel emotionally that degree of irritation with people's stupidity. Not that I would actually grab somebody's head and physically shove it in a trash can, but I feel to that degree of rage when they're that fucking stupid. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So before these dumbass motherfuckers who always motherfucking do this, come out online and say, Oh, Look at him. Look at he's losing his mind. He's such a violent fucking person. No, I'm just talking about how fucking irritated I get with insane stupidity because it's not only stupid, it damages the world. It damages their lives. It damages other people's experiences by them having that dumbass philosophy. It's not just a bad idea. It causes actual fucking problems for their life and the lives of people around them, but they don't recognize it's causing massive motherfucking problems. That's what pisses me off. That right there. It's not that it's just a bad idea. I wouldn't feel that degree of irritation if it was just a bad idea. It's a bad idea that causes actual real world physical problems for people. Okay? Because any degree of that stupidity leads to clunky, slow ass motherfucking improvements to radical life extension and to people valuing and understanding the importance of that. All right? That's why. They'd rather just gradually rot away and be screaming in agony and have to gradually have their bodies decay all these surgeries and all this other bullshit, even though they wouldn't actually prefer that because they're that fucking stupid versus having transhumanist tech fix a lot of these problems. Oh. 
Different topic for a different day, right? The transhumanist topic. Yes, they're all connected in a very specific way. But people are so fucking stupid, they don't even put the two and two together in their brain. You got to explain every goddamn last little fucking topic for it to finally goddamn register to people. You got to explain individually the importance of edible fruit tree landscapes separately. You got to you got to explain transhumanism, the importance of that separated out. And you've got to explain this to people separated out from transhumanist agendas that may be nefarious and used to fuck people over. You've got to actually explain this shit to people because they're that fucking stupid. They can't even just use basic sense to understand that you're referring to something other than a nefarious misuse of the agenda. And you got to separately explain the thing with climate change. You got to separately explain every last little motherfucking subject matter and topic under the goddamn sun because they're too fucking stupid to just automatically put shit together in their motherfucking heads without it being specifically, in particular, laid out in microscopic goddamn detail. And then when you do that, they get pissed off at you for being overly detailed and overly specific. TMI, I didn't want that. Well, why'd you fucking ask about it in the first place if you didn't want that much fucking information? You're the one who went on about me not being specific enough, you dumb fuck. Wanting more specificity, so here's all the goddamn specificity you can handle, and now it's too much for you. You sack of slime. Just, just like... Just rot away because you're a sack of slime. You're rotting anyway. So just go away and rot away somewhere away from me, please. Thank you. Just just rot away somewhere else. OK, so I don't have to smell your rotting stink coming out of your fucking breath. All right. Thank you. Just do whatever your bullshit is elsewhere and rot away elsewhere. But the problem is nowadays, somebody rotting away elsewhere is directly causing problems that fill the rest of the world because everything's more and more connected now than it ever was before. And everything's affecting the environment and atmosphere more than it was before now because of feedback loops, which have to also be explained to people because they don't understand them. God damn it. All right. I'm going on that little rant because a lot of you enjoy my little side rant tangent things in these videos, right? So before we have a commenter go on about, hey, why are you going on these side tangent rants and blah, 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 blah. It's because a lot of my audience enjoys that and I have fun with them. And I'm actually feeling good going on these rants. I'm not actually myself all that mad, really. I do it for comical effect, but a lot of people miss that and don't understand that. Because once again, that has to be explained to them, right? An illustration of exactly what I'm motherfucking talking about. God damn it. It's a bitch to think about all these things at once and be aware of them all at the same motherfucking time. <sighs> so let's continue, shall we? With the topic at hand. <sighs> now, <clears throat> another example. Okay. You spend a bunch of time working on an art piece that you spent. Let's say you spent fucking weeks Working on this piece of art, right? Your dude, and somehow, some way, your computer gets fucked up. You you saved a backup file, but somehow that got fucking trashed, or you know, your dog stepped on some just weird, bizarre fucking thing, or somebody breaks into your house, steals your computer, breaks your computer, right? Some crazed girl, something happens that destroys your fucking work of art that you spent two weeks working on. In spite of you setting up backup files, those also get destroyed somehow. Let's say a house fire, whatever, right? And this has happened in people's lives. Are you going to tell me that it lasting for that set? You were the only person who saw the art. Boom. You meant to show it to others. You're the only one who saw it. And then your whole house fucking burns down and then it's gone. Nobody knows about it. Nobody remembers it. Nobody has any record. All, all it is. Oh yeah. I had this badass piece of art. No motherfucker. That's not more valuable as a piece of art than a piece of art that lasts after you put weeks of work into it, that others can see and get value from also to where the value can expand from you and spread out to the world from. Okay. That's a more valuable piece of art and the situation attached to it and associated with it, which is longer lasting is more valuable because it's longer lasting and more pleasurable to more individuals aside from just yourself. All right. Art is always valuable. Yes. It's not more valuable when it's totally destroyed after you putting a shit amount of work into it. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So, because a lot of times people just go on these weird tangents. Like I, you know, they just say these like statements of like esoteric this or that. And it's like, that's not what's being referred to. What we're referring to is something very fucking specific here. We're referring to 
the ratio of values of things. We're not talking about whether something is valuable or not at all. We're talking about what degree of value it has and how long lasting that value has. Positive, affirmative, pleasurable value specifically, not just vague generalized value in the etheric, you know, whatever sense. Of course it has value. It's obvious. Okay. And that's exactly the point. But overall, the experience has less value and can quite often, those experiences quite often cut years off of an artist's artistic career or artistic enthusiasm and can really throw a fucking wrench in the water. Okay. More like a meteor in the water when you have that kind of experience because your enthusiasm to produce more art can be drained and diminished and gone after an experience like that. You know, not increased, actually, because you're like, well, no matter how much I put into it, there's a possibility of it being completely burned and destroyed right once I'm fucking done with it. And so it leads to all sorts of mental traumas and all sorts of other shit. Okay, it's a problem. It's not more valuable because it it disappeared after all your hard work. What the hell? So. All right. That's one example. Another example, T- take anything, anything at all. You put a huge amount of fucking work and effort into. Let's say making a huge amount of money, okay? Let's say you somehow pull off making millions of dollars after many, many years of work, okay? But somehow what ends up happening is all your rental properties get burned down, destroyed, okay? Your insurance falls apart. It just, every, all the money you invest, like, you know, your money gets stolen by somebody or it gets, you know, siphoned away by relatives or taken by relatives who need it for healthcare. So basically let's just, you do a shit ton of work. You gather a huge amount of fucking money. You have stuff planned for it long-term and it's just gone, right? It's total bullshit for you to say that that money has more value. The work you put into it has more value because the result was more temporary. No, 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 it has more value if the money lasts and you can do what you want it to do with the money versus it being just ripped away from you, okay? Or somebody holding you at gunpoint, hey, motherfucker, give me all your goddamn money. And then they fucking take your suitcase full of all, you know, all the fucking cash in it, right? Take any amount of money, right? Especially if you're at the poverty line or under it, you fucking spend a month, you know, gathering 500, 600 bucks, right? And then somebody comes... You know, you're in like Flint, Michigan or fucking Detroit or whatever. And somebody's like, hey, give me your motherfucking money, bitch. And then or I'm going to shoot you. And in a lot of cases, they'll shoot you anyway, or they'll they're they very much will shoot you if you don't give them their money, like for real. So it's like, all right, give them money. At least you have a potential of living. Right. If you're not dumb enough to try and pull the, the macho shit of trying to, like, run after the guy and disarm him if he's standing like fucking 10 feet away from you. Right. You know. I'm talking about somebody who's not that fucking dumb and they're going to stand far enough away from you. So if you move, they can shoot at you. Not somebody who's going to be right up against your head where you can tilt and maybe disarm them. And a guy who's going to have other people with him, not just himself, also pointing guns at you. All right. So a situation where you can't fucking escape it, where you're going to get shot to death if you don't give them the money. Okay. And so there you go. Your money's fucking gone. Disappear in the case that they don't actually kill you. Right. And then let's talk about this, your lifespan itself, the pleasure you experience in life. No, your life didn't have more meaning if you experienced a short ass motherfucking life with very little accomplishments. It had more meaning if your life lasted longer and within that time frame, you accomplished things within it that were valuable to you within that time frame. That's going to give it more value. Okay. So the value is where it's in pleasure and it's in long lastingness of the pleasure. All right. So before they say it, because they're that fucking stupid, people try to give the example of orgasm. Well, if you, all you ever do is experience orgasm, it's just going to get boring after a while. No. If you're experiencing an orgasm, if you're actually for real, that's what you're actually feeling or experiencing. And the dopamine is surging properly, serotonin is surging properly. It's not going to get old. It's only going to get old if your dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin stop surging properly. And that would mean what? It's not pleasurable anymore. It's not because of orgasm, orgasm, orgasm. It's because orgasm, oh, not so much of an orgasm, not so much of an orgasm. 
mechanical body processes that cause ejaculation that aren't the experience of orgasm anymore. Okay? It's not orgasm, 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 oh, bored. It's orgasm, less of an orgasm, slightly boring, almost no orgasm and sensation. Oh, shit, this is starting to get really old. That's what it is. It's lack of orgasmic sensation that gets boring and old. It's not orgasm itself via the correct sensation that gets boring and old and miserable. And before they say it, because they're this fucking dumb. Oh, what about the people who, who have automatic mechanical orgasms? They're an exact illustration of what I'm talking about because it's just a mechanical thing going on and their body isn't actually experiencing proper, correct flow of pleasure from it when that happens, because they're facing the anxiety mentally and otherwise of, oh, what if I collapse in public and experience this happening against my will? Holy shit. So their pleasure is being diminished, not increased. It's not the orgasm itself that is the boring thing to them. It's, it's not being processed correctly that becomes the boring, miserable thing. But if your system is attuned to not having that flaw, that the carbon-based human system has currently, then you can bypass that flaw. All right? Jeez, man. I know people would mention that in the comments if I didn't specify it. It's like they always try to hunt for these little fucking loopholes, and you can always demonstrate that their supposed attempt at a loophole is false and is not accurate. Nope, that's not a loophole. Nope, that's not one. Nope, here's the confirmation of, once again, the same principle at play. The longer lasting pleasure is the, is the better thing, the more valuable thing, right? In the affirmative sense. When people say life is meaningless, they're inaccurate, but at least they're not as inaccurate as motherfuckers say in this shit. And usually when people say life as a whole is meaningless, they mean there's no overarching cosmic, benevolent, affirmative, inspirational meaning behind it is what they're meaning to actually say. Okay. Only if they're really stupid are they going to say there's no meaning whatsoever, including negative bad meanings, right? Or negative bad values. I know there's some dumb motherfuckers who claim that, that there's no meaning whatsoever, good or bad. Those are just idiots. Okay? Most people saying life is meaningless, they mean overarchingly, as a whole, there isn't some overarching cosmic benevolent affirmative meaning to it. Even though you can yourself create and surmise and experience and create value and meaning for yourself amid your pleasurable experiences within it, there's not some overarching life itself as a whole has meaning. It doesn't mean that your individual life and the experiences in it don't have any meanings. And the motherfuckers who try to claim that, that individual experiences in life don't have meaning, they're dumb motherfuckers. Okay? They're also lying sacks of shit, just like the people who say temporary gives value to life. So they're not off the hook either. So don't even try to pull that shit. If you're inclined to be one of those people, well, life has no meaning whatsoever at all, period. Either good or bad. They're just completely meaningless. Just shake yourself off and stop being so fucking stupid. Thank you. Recognize that meaning includes pleasurable meanings and or painful, torturous meanings. Okay? Pleasurable value or painful, torturous value or a combination of both. Value does not only have to do with positive values, all right? It's a lot of time in antenatalist circles, effortless circles, you hear them talking about life has negative value, negative value, negative value. So a lot of people get confused. Well, why are you using the word in connection with value? What they're talking about is significance, negative significance. That's a more accurate word to use than value because value indicates positivity. So it creates this weird conundrum language wise that confuses natalists. A lot of times. So it's better to say life is mostly full of negative significance. And comparatively speaking, in individual lives scattered throughout existence, bits and pieces of pleasurable significance mixed in. But overwhelmingly, it's full of negative significance predominantly versus positive significance, right? Overwhelmingly so as a whole, right? Minus individual luxury experiences amid certain specific life forms, like myself, for example, and the idiots who also go on with this spiel of temporary gives things more meaning. So me, you, no matter what dumbass philosophy or good quality philosophy we have, 
our lives are filled with far more motherfucking luxury than animal lives, than the majority of animal lives, that is. Far more luxury than just about every other species that exists. And you full well know it. So, we're the exceptions, the massive motherfucking exceptions. We are not the standard, we are not the norm. Oh, but what about the pleasurable things that animals experience throughout their lives before they die horrific deaths? What about those? What about, what about, what about, what about? Duh. Of course they're experiencing pleasurable things. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep living, dumbass. Of course, that's why they keep doing the living thing instead of the dying thing. But cats, for example, when they realize, hey, the dying thing is inevitable, it's going to motherfucking happen, they purposely crawl off somewhere to cause themselves to just die away from everybody else, right? They kind of get the hint at a certain point, you know? They're like, yeah, doing the living thing isn't going to equal me living anymore. And they just kind of feel it. You know what I'm saying? You ever had a cat crawl under a house and die under there? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So, just like there was actually a tradition in ancient times in India and elsewhere where really elderly people who recognized they were about to die oftentimes would just purposely go off into the middle of nowhere and cause themselves to die of starvation or whatever the elements had to throw at them in the middle of nowhere away from the towns and villages, specifically so that their relatives and stuff didn't have to deal with all sorts of the, you know, extra trauma and everything attached to, you know, and the logistics of dealing with having to bury or burn their body or whatever. They're like, no, I'm just going to relieve them of the burden. I'm just going to go off and disappear basically. Right. And they would do this on purpose throughout a lot of history, right? Intentionally. <clears throat> so, Everybody else could just keep going on with their lives and not having to think twice about it, really, you know? Because they're like, well, it's inevitable anyway, so let's just have it happen, basically, right? You know? <clears throat> basically, it's a, it was a form of passive suicide, is what it was, historically. So my main focus in this video is to empower you, the listener, excuse me, to be able to call out this bullshit next time you fucking hear it or see it spoken anywhere. You can be as calm toned as you want, but please make sure to call it out and give examples so that they give you the blank eye at dead silent treatment and try to change the subject. Please do that so that that is the effect that follows. Or so that they actually agree with you in the rare cases of being an intelligent individual who's not going to play the arrogant bullshit game in front of your face and then two weeks, a couple months later, come back to you and act like it was their own idea that they came to that conclusion later after you mentioned it. When it was in fact inspired by you talking to them, but in their arrogance, they couldn't acknowledge that. You know what I mean? You know how that goes, right? Yeah. I just, I love the fact that my brain and probably your brain listening to this it doesn't allow anyone to get away with any kind of wiggle wormy bullshit trying to fucking like get away with some narrative that you know is bullshit with you because you see fucking 10 miles through it, right? It's beautiful. It's really fucking nice being able to see that far into shit. Very fucking useful too. In terms of interpersonal interactions, you can fucking know what people are going to goddamn do well before they do it. So there you have it, folks. In the course of being your social parasite self, which you should embrace with honor and pride, the title and the label, what you should do is call motherfuckers out who peddle this crap. Ever going forward. In this video, I'm giving a special shout out to Do Not Watch and his channel. Check out his stuff. He recently covered this topic uh, on his stuff and talks about it often. So be sure to show him support for his well-thought, deeply intellectual stuff he muses on about. He's got a great sense of humor as well, by the way, and I'm very honored that he personally requested me to come and show up on his channel on his live streams, live chats. Highly commendable, and I appreciate him for that. 
With that, I will talk to you soon. PB signing out and plunging in to long-lasting, prolonged pleasure of the most intense, wonderful, orgasmic variety, which is exactly what gives it its greater meaning. And in fact, what gives it its meaning in the first fucking place. And I hope you do the same, with the same awareness I have of it. Thank you. Talk to you later.